Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me all right? Can you hear me all right? My name... My name is Doug Holcomb. I'm the general manager of Greater Bridgeport Transit, and I want to thank you all for being here, and thank you, Governor, for taking the time out of your busy schedule for being here. There's a lot of people to introduce. But I have a few comments that I, that I wanted to make. Um, I just uh, first want to recognize a bunch of people that are here. Uh, Joe Kubik, who is the current chairman of Greater Bridgeport Transit, Joe Kubik. Bill Coleman, representing the mayor's office in the city of Bridgeport. Deputy Commissioner of DOT, Gary Ucolito, is a great friend of transit and has been for many years. The Deputy Commissioner of Energy, uh, Vicki Hackett, for Connecticut DEP. And Shante Hanks also is here as a surprise this morning, Deputy Commissioner of Housing. Thanks for being here. And I know State Rep Joe Gresco is here, and I don't know if I'm missing anybody else. Dennis Selinski from the Bureau of Transit and Ride Sharing at Condot, also a great friend of transit. Today we're here to share with you the progress we've made so far in bringing cleaner, cleaner propulsion systems into the state's transit fleet. And what I'll talk about this morning is kind of just the tip of the iceberg because we've developed a team of people who have worked closely with GBT, and I'll talk about the team in just a minute, in order to bring these buses to you. Um, Public transportation has long claimed environmental benefits, um, always uh, really attributed to the riders' uh, selection of public, transita public transportation and riding together, and therefore reducing congestion, reducing demand for non-renewable resources, surface parking, and things like that. This location for this event was selected because <clears throat> it's the heart of our operation. It's where the buses are kept, maintained, cleaned, repaired, and more recently disinfected before they go back into service. And so it's fitting to have this right here, and you can see the buses and the charging infrastructure, which is right behind this bus and in front of this bus. And um, I, wanna, I, wanna just, uh, I wanna share that th these are the first in what we expect to be a swift and steady conversion of the state's fleet to cleaner propulsion systems. And there's a, just a quick story. Over the weekend, I learned this, that a record was broken last Thursday. And up until last Thursday, the record for gaining the most Instagram followers <clears throat> was held by Jennifer Aniston, who got more than a million in five hours and 16 minutes. Well, last Thursday, that record was shattered. Um, and the, a new Instagram account reached 44, I mean, reached a million in 44 minutes. And that was the British naturalist, uh, world-renowned naturalist, Sir David Attenborough. And he reached a million in 44 minutes, and his inaugural quote, or inaugural Instagram post was this. The continents are on fire, uh, glaciers are melting, coral reefs are dying, and fish are disappearing from our oceans. And he did this, and he said, and the list goes on and on. And he did this because he was saying, opening the Instagram account, that it was a matter of communications now. And, he, and in doing that, reached in, in, inside of one day 2.5 million people. So it's against the backdrop like that that we work locally, that we take those global initiatives and we start working on our own, on our own efforts, what we can do locally. And so that phrase, um, act, think globally and act locally, uh, locally, came to us by Patrick Goetz in 1915, and it's as irrelevant today as it, won, as it was then. So I thought maybe you'd guess that that was Brad Pitt that beat Jennifer Aniston, but it was not. It was David Attenborough. So that's a nice sound, though, too, right? Trains, that's a good thing. So acting, acting locally is exactly what we're doing here. These buses will reduce emissions. There'll be a net reduction after you consider the energy generated at the plant. We'll reduce the, the amount of diesel fuel that we use. These first two buses will reduce diesel demand by 29,000 or 23,000 gallons in the first year. And that's a reduction in demand on renewable resources. And I think Shante Hanks will speak to this too. This is important for our neighborhoods in Bridgeport and throughout the Bridgeport region and eventually in other parts of the state. Our riders, the neighborhoods, deserve the healthiest uh, public transportation that we could provide for them. And now if I could briefly, I'll try briefly to go through the list of, uh, of agencies that worked on this because it was a great partnership. The Federal Transit Administration, who provided a low-no grant for us. Condot staff, 
and there were many of them. Rick Hanley is here, and Phil Scarazzo are here, Dennis are here, but provided a local match for the, for the federal money and also lots of technical support. The partnership, by partnership, I don't mean just funding. I mean, these are people at the table with us every week working on this project. Um, Connecticut Transit staff, I know Jacinto is here and Dan Fiorello are here, so we had a much deeper bench in maintenance by having Connecticut Transit working with us. The DEEP in technical support and guidance. Uh, one thing that you may not know about is the Center for Transportation and Environment, uh, a not-for-profit in Georgia which helped us with project management on this. It's their mission to incorporate vehicles like this into, their, in, into the nation's fleets. And Wendell Architects, and I would be remiss if I have missed Steve Kofta who's with Proterra itself. Oh, and, and Dennis with Wendell and Steve Kofta with Proterra. Our buses were built in, uh, in South Carolina. The money is federal, low, no, low or no emissions program money and some formula money along with state match. And the first two buses are known as the Proterra Catalyst, 440 kilowatt. They'll give us a range, of, we hope, of around 150 miles between charges. And they'll be followed in a year or so with three additional buses, the next generation Proterra called the uh, zero emission extended range fifth generation buses, which will give us somewhere north of 200 miles uh, between charges is what we really need for a city bus service. The part of the project was the charging infrastructure, and after this, I'll stay and talk about the charging infra infrastructure if anybody has any questions on that. But, but in the meantime, what I would like to do is stop talking, and right, sorry, I can keep going if you like. Is stop, is stop talking and, and ask um, and give the podium over to Joe Kubik, who's the current chairman of Greater Bridgeport Transit. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. And I think I've got to talk a little louder because of this damn mask. Um, but I'd like, to, on behalf of the board, uh, the board of commissioners of the GBT, I'd like to welcome everybody here. Um, um, the, as you may or may not know, the board of commissioners is made up of volunteer citizens who serve uh, from Stratford, uh, Trumbull, Bridgeport, and Fairfield, and they volunteer their time to help guide the, the transit authority through, uh, well, through things like this. Doug asked me to say a few words, and he stressed few, so I'll do my best. Uh, we are so excited to have these buses. The first two deployed fully electric buses in the state of Connecticut, bus 4001 and bus 4002. Hopefully in the next few years, few years you're going to see 4003, 4, 5, 6, as many as we can get and put on the roads. For all the benefits that you're going to hear about for these buses, this is just a wonderful day for for our commission, for our, for our, for our, 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 our region, our, our, the greater Bridgeport region. I, I have to thank um, the board, uh, the, well, not the, the board, don't worry about them, I have to thank this, the management, the staff and the employees, the dedicated people that have made this thing happen. We talked about this several years ago and about bringing it to fruition, about plans, and now it is fruition. And thank you, Governor, for coming to see the experience this with us. I want to thank our partners in, in this project, certainly the uh, Connecticut uh, Department of Transportation and its various divisions, the FTA for financing and, and funding, as well as CONDOT, uh, the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection, the Connecticut Public Utilities and Regul Regulatory Authority, CTE, the Center for Transportation and the Environment, and certainly our other our vendors, Proterra, who made these beautiful buses, and Wendell Engineering who helped us get the electrical stuff, charging stuff up and running. And with that said, thank you for coming, and Doug, I'll give it back to you, wherever you are. There you are. Thank you, Commissioner. Bill? And from, from the mayor's office in the city of Bridgeport, uh, Bill Coleman. Thanks, Doug. Hello, everybody. I'm Bill Coleman. I'm speaking here today on behalf of Mayor Joe Gannam and the director of the Office of Planning and Economic Development, Tom Gill. But today, I'm GBT. So I got my hat. I was allowed to uh, drive the bus which if you know anything about Bridgeport politics was novel because oftentimes we're at a different point of the bus, usually tossed under it, but we're doing okay today, so it's a happy day for us. Um, I want to say thanks to the governor, obviously. Uh, governor, we have a, a share one anecdote. We have a group of practitioners, deputy commissioners among the five biggest cities. Yeah, Bridgeport, Stanford, New Haven, Hartford, and Waterbury. And we get together as a best practice group and we have meetings with your commissioners. And they have been so wonderful to us in terms of providing access and resources. And the thing that's always impressed me, and I'm not just saying it to shine up since you all are here, but you see it visually today, is the extent to which your commissioners work together. 
I was joking that it was in a meeting with DEP about four or five months ago where the DEP commissioner promised electric buses and now it's the DOT that's here delivering it. We'll have a call later today with DOH in partnership with DOT. The way your cabinet works is remarkable, so thank you all for that. Um, I want to say also by way of compliment, we have the best transit agency in the state. No bias, it's just the plain truth. <laughs> Doug is not only, he is, he's fantastic. He is not only a, a, a crackerjack administrator, but he's a community builder, and he thinks about the city and the people in the city, not just where the rubber meets the road. And this is one of these wonderful examples where his technical expertise and his community vision come together to create something better for, for all of us. So it's a healthier, I, I was reading an article coming, uh, pr preparing to speak, the city of Chicago measures its economic benefit from its electric fleet, not just in terms of reduced maintenance costs, but reduced health costs. Who said we're, acting, we're thinking globally and acting locally, right? So you know the rates of childhood asthma in the city, particularly the east end, east side. These things are gonna help people's lives in a very tangible way. I ride the bus, I'm happy about it. I wanna say one last word of thanks to DOT in particular. You guys are very active in our city right now. We have the Pequannock River Bike Trail. You're helping us with that. So you're helping us with one of those choke points, Governor, you've identified along I-95, Route 8 and 25, you're working on that. You're fixing the Stratford Avenue Bridge. In fact, the drawbridge has been up this week. It's a little inconvenient if you guys could hustle it up. No, it's been great. <laughs> you're just very visible, and your planning shop is very much part of the conversation. We're lucky. Uh, we want to keep working with you. We want to see you to keep, keep coming here. One last anecdote. We started in a little electric scooter program this year. And unlike the crazy stories you hear in some of the big cities where scooters are all over the place and people are tripping, this has been run very modestly and very successfully. So, 11,000 people, 11,000 rides rather, in the three months we've had it, one third of the people say they use it to replace car trips. All of them want better bike infrastructure and separated lanes. But it shows that we're thinking similarly to create alternatives that really hit people at the kitchen table, right? It gives them options. You're working late, you gotta get that last mile, maybe the scooter helps you. So, while we're saving for our Teslas, in our electric cars, mine might be the Chevy Volt, but while we're saving for that, you can now, thanks to your work, take the electric Metro North, hop on the electric GBT train, and take that last mile on your electric scooter. So, and then read your emails and everything electronic in your house. So, we're doing the right thing, we just gotta do more of it. What we can do, we will, and we are, with your help. Thank you all very much. Welcome, Governor. I can't tell, but I'm smiling behind the mask. Um, the next is, is a, a great friend of public transportation, has been for many, many years. He's the deputy commissioner of the DOT, and the DOT is the source of our capital and operating funding, the majority of our operating funding. So let me introduce Garrett Ucolito. Okay, so I'm more than six feet away, so I'm... Uh, so thank you, uh, Doug. Thanks for inviting Condot here today. Uh, my name is Garrett Euclid. I'm the Deputy Commissioner at DOT. I'm here on behalf of Commissioner Gilletti. Um, I want to give special thanks to Governor Lamont for who since day one has been an ardent supporter of public transportation in our state. Um, I want to also thank Federal Transit Administration who without their support this would not be possible. Uh, as well as the staff at GBT, as well as CONDOT, who worked tirelessly to make this happen today. Um, I also want to just give a shout out to all the GBT mechanics and the bus drivers who've been working since day one of the COVID pandemic. They never stopped. They kept people moving to get to their essential jobs, um, get to the supermarket, get to the drugstore, um, even during the peak of the lockdown. So thank you. You are all heroes to all of us at CONDOT. So this is a great day. It's a new day for all of us in Connecticut. Uh, but I want to, uh, you know, be honest. I, I can't stand up here and not acknowledge the history of inequitable impact of transportation to our communities across the state and the country. Uh, you know, the interstate highway system brought about a lot of changes, a lot of economic growth um, in our country. But it, not everyone benefited from that. Uh, we saw greenhouse gas emissions increase, air, air pollution increase, as more people left public transportation to move into their own vehicles. Uh, this had the impact, uh, the unfortunate effect of reducing 
um, support for public transportation all across the country, it, uh, it, it, even though that is the way for all of our citizens to have access to employment opportunities, have access to education, to health care, and to recreation. In many communities like Bridgeport here today, um, we have seen uh, worsening air quality as a result of transportation, um, and that has led to increased rates of asthma for our communities, uh, which you know is a it's not just an economic impact; it's a healthcare impact, as was mentioned previously. So you know we have to acknowledge that. So it's only fitting that we begin to address climate change and the inequitable impact of transportation emissions by investing in buses that have zero tailpipe emissions and welcome the first two bus battery electric buses here in Connecticut. These are a set of a larger goal for CONDOT under the Lamont administration to expand our efforts across the state to implement more battery electric buses. We're planning to expand this system um, across the Hartford and New Haven divisions of CT Transit. And just recently, we received a $6.7 million grant from the Federal Transit Administration to make upgrades to our Stanford garage to also put battery electric buses in Stanford in the Stanford fleet of CT Transit. So through these investments in battery electric buses, we not only are going to improve air quality um, for our citizens locally, fight climate change globally, we also are going to provide a, uh, uh, the, the users of public transportation and the drivers and, and the crews who work every day to fix the vehicles with the best possible technology that we have to offer. Um, so with that, I just want to thank everyone um, here today for your support for public transportation and for helping make Connecticut a cleaner and healthier place to live. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Garrett. Please extend our thanks to the commissioner as well. Uh, next, I, I would like you to hear from the Deputy Commissioner of Energy, Vicki Hackett, DEP. Hi, everyone. I'm Vicki Hackett, Deputy Commissioner of Energy from Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. On, I'm here on behalf of Commissioner Katie Dykes. Um, so exciting to be here celebrating greener Bridgeport Transit as this project comes to fruition. This project showcases the tremendous leadership of Governor Lamont, DOT under Commissioner Giletti and Deputy Commissioner Euclido, and Greater Bridgeport Transit in making the transformational change that's necessary to bring the benefits of medium and heavy duty vehicle electrification to Connecticut, and in particular to our residents like those here in Bridgeport who've been disproportionately impacted by fossil fuel emissions. The people of Bridgeport deserve the cleanest transportation option available. The transportation sector is responsible for 70 percent of smog forming air pollution and 38 percent of greenhouse gas emissions in Connecticut. Electrification of our transit fleets will help Connecticut on its journey to meet national ambient air quality standards for ozone. Every day we exceed these standards represents very real and very tangible health impacts in Connecticut especially in our environmental justice communities like Bridgeport. DOT owns and oversees a fleet of 1,250 medium and heavy duty transit buses that serve large numbers of transit dependent residents in Connecticut. Approximately 30% of ridership are people of color and people with low incomes. Cleaning up emissions from our transit bus fleets will make a big contribution to mitigating the harmful health impacts of air pollution while also helping us meet our climate goals. In order to provide the health and air quality benefits we desperately need, as well as the economic opportunity as we begin to emerge from co the COVID-19 induced recession, we'll need to work together here in Connecticut, as well as with other states, to develop policies and programs to support electrification of the medium and heavy duty sector. Under Governor Lamont's leadership, DEEP is committed to working closely with DOT, with our municipalities, with our transit authorities, and with all our other partners to overcome the barriers to advancing transit fleet electrification in Connecticut. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to introduce Shante Hanks, Deputy Commissioner of Housing, who understands and always has the importance of transit in our neighborhoods. Shante. Good morning. Thank you, Doug. 
you know, I was standing over there and I realized my last three roles from Housatonic to uh, Congressman Himes to now the Department of Housing, there's been that continuity and collaboration with Doug Holcomb. So first off, I want to congratulate you and your 28 years with GBT. You've done a fabulous job and we're lucky to have you here in Bridgeport. I also want to thank Governor Lamont and, and share in uh, Deputy Commissioner Yucalito's sentiment. And it's under his leadership that our sister agencies collaborate with one another. And it's interesting, Bill did point that out. This afternoon, we do have a call to discuss our Resilience Bridgeport project here on the south end of Bridgeport. So there's some great things uh, happening in Bridgeport. And as a Bridgeport native and resident, I'm very excited. Um, these clean buses. I mean, this is amazing. This is this is wonderful because we know that bad air travels kind of like bad news, right? Really fast and wide. But this is great news because not only is this going to improve the quality of air for the people of Bridgeport, but for the state of Connecticut and beyond. So I'm excited to be here this morning. And Doug, again, congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, this, this would not be possible without the support of Governor Lamont and all of his commissioners and all of his staff. Um, we depend heavily on the state for all of the work that we do, and they've been enormously supportive, as you can tell by the people who are here today, from the DEEP and from housing and CONDOT and other places. So, and, and if I can just take a moment to thank the governor also for helping us through this pandemic and all the leadership do, during the pandemic. It's greatly appreciated. So, ladies and gentlemen, Governor Lamont. Hey, well, thank you, Doug, and um, everybody's here on behalf of somebody, so I'm here on behalf of uh, the people of Connecticut and the people of uh, Bridgeport, and uh, I just want you to know why I think this is just so important. I love it. We're going from greater Bridgeport Transit to greener Bridgeport Transit. And let me tell you what that means, Doug. You know, you pointed out the environment. It's about raging fires as you see throughout uh, the west and even here in connecticut right now you see that in terms of rising sea levels you see that in terms of sandy you see that in terms of wicked storms like isaia and the power going out and what that means but um bill as you pointed out we've also been reminded throughout this pandemic about the incredible racial disparities in terms of health care and uh, in terms of uh, health effects on people, especially people of color. And a lot of that is related to environmental justice. And I think that's part of what we're here for today uh, when it comes to what you can do to reduce the environmental risk to people's health. Because you've seen how those pre-existing conditions like asthma, much more likely to have asthma here along I-95 than you are elsewhere in the state and elsewhere in this country, and what that proclivity meant in terms of the effects of COVID on you. And uh, that's what greener Bridgeport Transit is all about to me. Look, here we are. In in Bridgeport, we're getting rid of the last coal-fired power plant. That's just on standby. That's gone within a year. This is going to be a center of wind power over the next five, ten years uh, going forward. Um, you know, uh, further north in Hartford, the trash to energy plant, they went to fuel cell um, uh, buses uh, some time ago. And we're doing everything we can to reduce those global emissions and what that means to your public health. And. Uh, you know, as Vicky pointed out, we're going to have an all non-carbon green grid over the next 15 years. Right now, we're over 50 percent non-carbon uh, going forward. But 70 percent of the particulates, 70 percent of the air pollution, 70 percent of what affects asthma comes from transportation. And that's why we've got to get a start on that as well. And that's part of what greener Bridgeport Transit is. You know, this is all battery powered, non-emissions. Uh, it's just extraordinary what that is. What did you say? 5,000 trees? I was joking. I mean, that's got to be little trees. I mean, that's extraordinary what a difference that will make in people's lives and in people's health. health. And uh, look, I'm a big believer in Bridgeport. I'm a big believer in our cities doing everything we can to help them get going. I think, uh, you know, in the post side of this pandemic, you're going to see our cities uh, really coming to life as a great place to be. And part of that is good, clean, efficient public transportation like greener Bridgeport Transit. 
Uh, I am proud to be with you today, and you're right, Doug, this is just the beginning. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. That's the end of the formal comment period. Thank you very much, Governor. It's great to have you here. Uh, uh, the staff, uh, all, all the staff at Bridgeport Transit thanks you for that, and all of the commissioners and deputy commissioners and state reps and senators that have been here. So thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll, let the, I'll, I'll let the announcement finish. And I, I have, there's, there's a, a handful of experts, more than that, in this, in this room right now, so I'll, I'll entertain any questions uh, that I can about the, the buses or the technology. And I also have Steve Kofta from Potera and um, Rick Hanley. When they start to talk about electric rates, I need Rick Hanley uh, to help me with that. So it's confusing. So thank you very much, everyone.